Hello all, welcome to part 13 of Kubernetes Made Easy tutorial. In this session, I'm going to explain about Kubernetes architecture. So let's get started. First of all, I'll explain the high level architecture of the Kubernetes. As you can see in this image, when we deploy Kubernetes, we get this cluster. This cluster contains a set of machines, that is physical machines or virtual machines. These machines act as nodes and these nodes can be categorized into master nodes and worker nodes. While master nodes manage these worker nodes, whereas in worker nodes, we deploy containers using container platforms like Docker. To form this cluster, there should be at least one master node and at least one worker node. And also there is a possibility of multiple clusters when we deploy Kubernetes. This is a high level architecture of the Kubernetes. Now let's dig deep into this architecture. First, let's dig deep into this master node. When you go deep into this master node, you'll find multiple components. There are four components in the master node. As you can see in this image, there are four components in this master node. That is API server, scheduler, control manager, and etcd. These are the four components in the master node. Let me explain one by one. First component, API server, I'll explain. API server component of the master node is responsible for overall communication in the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, this is the main component which is responsible for overall communication, okay? All communication that happens in the Kubernetes cluster, who is responsible? This API server component is responsible. And as you can see here, there are two interfaces, okay? There are two interfaces using which we can interact with the Kubernetes cluster. One of the, com one of the interface here we have is a command line interface, which is kubectl tool. Whereas the other interface is the UI interface that is Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, these are the two interfaces using which we can interact with the Kubernetes cluster. But to interact with this Kubernetes cluster, these two interfaces need to talk to API server. Via API server only, they can interact with the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, apart from these four components in the master node, we have these two interfaces in the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. But in order for these two interfaces to communicate with the Kubernetes cluster, they have to talk to API server and via API server only, they have to come interact with the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, fine. So one of them is the command line interface, other one is the UI interface. Okay, Kubernetes dashboard is the UI interface, kubectl tool is the command line interface. Fine. Now, the next component of the master node that is scheduler. Scheduler is responsible for scheduling the pods across the nodes okay it's responsible for scheduling the pods across the nodes so how can scheduler schedule the suitable pods across nodes this is possible because scheduler knows all the configuration and hardware requirements of the nodes okay so it can guess based on the requirements of the pods it can guess which pod is suitable for which node but from where does the scheduler component get all this configuration and hardware requirement information? It will get all this information from the configuration files, okay? From the configuration file, the scheduler will get information like configuration and hardware requirements of these nodes and parts. And based on this, uh, this information, scheduler schedules the suitable parts to the suitable nodes. That's what the Second component of the master node scheduler is all about. Now, let's move to the third component of the master node that is control manager. This control manager component of the master node runs something known as controllers, okay? These controllers check, check whether the nodes in the Kubernetes cluster are running all the time, okay? It's monitoring the nodes that are running in the Kubernetes cluster to see whether they are running all the time. And these controllers, which are run by this control manager component, also 
checks the health of the cluster. And one more thing also, guys. Okay, this this controllers which are run by this control manager component of this master node, right? Will also make sure whether the correct number of nodes are running in the Kubernetes cluster. How? How come the controller manager run controllers know about the correct number of nodes are running in the cluster or not? Kubernetes cluster or not? How they will know? So they will know all this stuff from a file known as specification file. Okay, this control manager knows as uh, gets the information from a file known as specification file that how many number of components, how many number of nodes need to run in the cluster. Okay, based on that information only, the controllers run by this control manager will check whether the correct number of nodes are running in the cluster. That's what it will check. Is. Okay, these are three things it will check. Okay, first check is like the nodes are running all the time or not. Health of the cluster will be checked by this uh, controllers which are run by this control manager component. And third thing is correct number of nodes are running in the Kubernetes cluster as per the specification files as mentioned in the specification file. Now, now guys, these three components are over. Now let's go to the fourth component. Okay, fourth component is this open source database etcd. Etcd is an open source database which is responsible for storing. Okay, which is responsible for storing all the data in the Kubernetes cluster. All the data in the Kubernetes cluster need to be stored at a single database that is etcd, which is an open source database, and this is a fourth component. So. These are the components of the master node, and uh, I also covered the two interfaces using which we can interact with the Kubernetes cluster. And these interfaces need to talk to the API server to interact with the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Now let's dig deep into the worker nodes. Okay. We are done with the master node components, right? Now let's dig deep into the worker node components. There are three worker node components. In every worker node, you will have these three components. Okay. One is kubelet. Second one is to proxy and third one is a container runtime guys not runner guys spelling mistake is a container runtime these are three components in each and every worker node we'll have these three components so what they will do let me first explain this component kubelet okay kubelet is an agent which runs in all worker nodes and what is the responsibility of this kubelet it will make sure the containers are running in the pods as specified in the pod specs Okay, it, this kubelet is an agent running on each worker node and it will make sure whether the containers are running in the pods as specified in where? Pod specs, okay, pod specs. So that is what is the purpose of this kubelet. And this kubelet communicates or interacts with the master node via API server. Okay? That's what is the kubelet. Now we have another component of the worker node that is kube proxy, okay? Another component of the worker node is nothing but the kube proxy, which is a network agent, which is responsible for maintaining the network configurations and rules. Okay, which is responsible for maintaining the network configurations and rules. And this kube proxy tracks the master node via the API server only. Again, the communication point is API server. Okay. Now the third component of the worker node that is container runtime it's not runner runtime spelling mistake is there okay so this is nothing but a software guys okay which runs these containers container runtime is a software for running these containers example for the container runtime software is docker software okay which make sure or which runs these containers guys the component is responsible for running the containers okay example for this container runtime software is docker software and when we club all this high level architecture of kubernetes and uh, this master node components along with this uh, two interfaces for interacting with the kubernetes cluster and also when we club this uh, components of the worker node all this together if you put it will become this complete architecture of the kubernetes okay this will become the complete architecture of the complete and in detailed architecture of the kubernetes so as you can see here, there are two interfaces using which we can interact with the Kubernetes cluster. And we have this master node, which contains all the four components that is the API server, scheduler, control manager, and etcd. And also we have this uh, worker node components, okay, worker nodes and worker node components that is kubelet, kube proxy, and container runtime. 
so this becomes the complete and in detailed architecture of the kubernetes so hope guys you understood the complete and in detailed architecture of kubernetes in this session so that's it guys see you in the next video session thank you bye